I'm Kira. And I'm not Elena. And you're watching BG TV. Heading over to the volleyball courts to see how our girls played in their sections games. We will honor our veterans at Little Britain's Veterans Day breakfast. We'll learn about the dangers of sports related injuries and how we can avoid them. Finally, we'll see what Joe is up to this week with Joe with the Flow. <laughs> Hey Kira, why couldn't the volleyball player cross the road? I don't know why. <laughs> there were too many bumps. Get it? Bump? Okay. I get it. Hey Wizards, it's Nick Markey here with Wizard Sports. It's that time of the year where fall and winter sports start to overlap. Swimming and cross country still have meets in their season, while winter sports are currently hosting tryouts. In recent news, volleyball experienced a devastating loss in the section semifinals against Pine Bush. Great season, girls. Everyone is proud of you. Cross country had their section meet on November 6th. The top Washingtonville girl was Ann Hagen with 15th place, and the top boy was Bailey Hatsman with 16th place. Now they will be moving on to Nike Cross Regionals on November 30th. Good luck, runners. The girls swim team earned third place at their section meet. Huge congratulations to Olivia Brown, Kate Kennedy, Katherine Klein, and Alyssa Miller for qualifying for the state meet in the 200 free and 400 free relays. Katherine Klein also qualified in the 200 free. Awesome job, Wizards. Now let's take a closer look at volleyball's running sections. Wizards, this is Sharice Whittington here at the Girls Varsity Sections Game. Let's see what they have in store for us today. Okay, so how do you guys think your team played today? We played really good. We played as a team, and once we got down a little bit, we still kept like fighting, and we did really good. I'm proud. Nice. What do you think? I think we played well together. We've been playing for like what five years now, so I think that kind of pushed us to play even better. about winning if you guys can express it in one word amazing <laughs> heartbreak no not heartbreaking like my it's just I have no a speechless it just leaves me speechless Wow Wizards epic game tonight and they won it all in only four sets let's see what they have in store for us in the next game versus Pine Bush <laughs> I'm here with Maddie Garcia after a tough section semifinal loss against Pine Bush. Now, Maddie, how are you feeling after that game? I'm feeling really accomplished and really proud of how we played, um, even throughout the season. Um, by the third set of the Pine Bush game, we were definitely playing really intense and we were playing our hardest. We were doing our best. And even though uh, it came to a loss, uh, we really came together at that game, like working up to that game. So I'm still really proud. You think the team's going to be in good hands next year? I'm pretty excited to see um, how the program is next year with a new coach because I know the varsity coach right now is leaving. Um, but the chemistry on the team that um, the, the girls having coming up to varsity is really good. So I'm excited for what they can pull off. And that does it for the girls varsity volleyball season. I'll catch you on the flip side. Come to Mystic Cafe, 9 Ocean Avenue. And don't forget, Wizard Wear Wednesdays. Wear your Wizard Wear, you get 10% off.
High School will be hosting its annual food drive from November 18th to November 22nd. Please bring non-perishable food items and place them in the boxes provided at the front desk. The United States Army will have an informational table set up during all lunches on Monday, November 18th for any students interested in speaking with them. There's going to be a blood drive in the high school library from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Tuesday, November 19th. Donors must be at least 16 years old and weigh a minimum of 110 pounds and not have donated within the last 56 days. Forms will be available during lunch in the main office and JROTC bunker. Remember to have your consent form signed and your picture IDs ready. The guidance office will be hosting instant admission days Wednesday, December 4th at 10 p.m. with Mount St. Mary College and Thursday, December 5th at 11.15 a.m. with SUNY Orange. If you are interested in signing up, please stop by the guidance office. On November 28th, Thanksgiving Day, Washingtonville will be hosting its annual turkey trot. Registration starts at 8.15 a.m. The entry fee is $5 with a non-perishable item to be donated to the Country Kids Food Pantry. Applications are now being accepted for the Hobie Youth Leadership Conference. Students must be current 10th graders with demonstrated leadership potential. Essays are required. Please see Ms. Cooney and guidance for details. Deadline to apply is November 23rd. The GSA Spectrum will be meeting Friday, November 22nd after school at 2.15 in room 204. The school store is now open during all lunches. Student Coalition thanks you for your support and for Student Coalition members. All New York City permission slips are due November 19th. Space is limited, so make sure to get your slips to Miss A or Miss Polo. Attention PM BOCES students. Parent-teacher conferences are scheduled for November 20th and 21st. For more information, go to the main office. One of my favorite memories from elementary school is my uncle coming to the Veterans Day breakfast. That's such a great way to honor those who have served our country. Now, let's head over to Little Britain to see how this year's breakfast went. Hey Wizards, it's Emma Green again. This time, I'm at Little Britain for the Veterans Day breakfast. Let's go see what's happening. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Saving our country, I love you so much. Dear Reverend, thank you for um, keeping us safe and protecting our country. Thank you, Dad. I really want to thank you for all the time and effort that you put into being in the Air Force. Dear Robert, thank you for putting all your time and your effort into helping the world and being in the military and still having time for us. What does Veterans Day mean to you? To me, it means a time where um, the military gets together and they talk about how they serve the country and that how they sacrifice their life for themselves, for other people, and to make them more happier and to make this country free. Seeing that we're at a breakfast, what was the not most pleasant food that you had while serving? Uh, I've been in food services for the Air Force for the last 16 years, so I enjoy the food a lot. So, like, I haven't really had a bad meal because. I'm always the one cooking the meals. If you don't mind me asking, where and when did you serve? I was in the service from 1959 to 1962. I did a year and a half in Alaska and Fort Myers, Virginia, the rest. I've been in the Air Force for almost 16 years. I have uh, deployed to Kuwait and Jordan. Um, I've been in four different wings, so I've served in Nevada, Texas, and now New York. I served from this year earlier, January. We just returned back uh, beginning of August and over in uh, Saudi Arabia, so For all the men and women who have served our country, thank you for everything you've done for us. Emma Green, signing off. Did you know that at least 20% of teens say that they've been diagnosed with at least one concussion? That's a scary statistic. I know. Gianna has more information and some tips to stay safe. Hey, did you see that kid get hit in the head with a basketball in gym class? Yeah, I did. It looked pretty bad. I think he might have a concussion. Did you know that an estimate of 300,000 students sustain a concussion per year? Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, not a lot of people are aware of how serious the issue is. And to find out more information, I was able to get some feedback from some experts. Let's go check it out. The definition of a concussion is when the brain um, has an impact to the side of the head hitting the skull. So you could think of the brain as a ping pong ball surrounded in water 
and all that is enclosed inside of like a balloon, which is the meniscus. Initially complain of a headache, some nausea, some light sensitivity, um, sometimes they get dizzy, may even lose consciousness. Anytime we have an athlete that suffers a head injury uh, that results in any symptoms, uh, we take that very seriously. When did you sustain your first concussion? Fifth grade. My seventh grade year. Eighth grade year, the same team on him. And how did you do that? I hit my head on the goalpost. In a football game. Kind of mauled by some kid for no reason. Coaching certification class, we teach about the signs and symptoms of a concussion, how to recognize what a concussion is, um, what happens inside the brain when a concussion takes place. We talk about making sure that your athletes wear the proper equipment, that they know the technique that they're supposed to do to try to prevent this injury from taking place. Everyone's usually worried about is football, but we need to recognize that concussions can take place in other sports as well. We, we think about sports like wrestling and uh, the dangers that are associated with that. We think about sports like lacrosse, uh, where there's collisions that can take place, or um, even in baseball and softball, where uh, a hit to the head from a pitch can cause serious damage as well. So there's risks in every sport, but obviously some sports are higher risk than others. I didn't know concussions were a serious health issue. Yeah, it's really bad. Good thing we were able to find out more information, though. Maybe next time you should try and not hit the kid in the head with the basketball. Yeah, you're right. And now, what you've all been waiting for, here's Joe with the flow. Hello my friends, my name is Joe and you are watching Joe at the Flow, where first I would like to apologize, as I said we were going to eSports, but I guess you'll have to wait for next week for that. But today we are on the streets of Washingtonville, literally on the streets, and we are going to be, we're going to be uh, taking trips and visiting small businesses, seeing what it's like to own small businesses. So uh, why don't you come along and join me? I thank you for watching. <laughs> As the owner of your own business, yes. what do you do? Oh, well there's a lot of back-end stuff that you don't see besides walking into the beautiful shop. <laughs> you're constantly having to make sure you're fully stocked with everything. You have to, all the business aspect from, there's like, you know, that sales tax stuff you have to keep track yeah, of. Probably not important, right? <laughs> oh, no. Well, make sure we have everything, like from bread, eggs, uh, steaks, chicken, mm -hmm. and we stock, and uh, have a king restaurant. It is everything. It is a lot of work. It is a lot of fun. It is um, very challenging. What's one of the most rewarding factors of having a small business? Um, the people. The people that I get to meet in the community. That's been by, by far above anything I could have expected. They come in and like I know what they get or I know there's a couple people that have been coming in for years and they I know their names and like very close friends. When you remember, you know, especially how much sugar they like, you know, <laughs> things like that makes it make a little difference. Yeah, exactly, like how many grains of sugar. <laughs> I like roughly 1,237. <laughs> I'm somewhat of a, a dancer myself. Just kidding. <laughs> Being social, it's important. Viewers, viewers. Connections. Connections are important. Those connections. So this is a Jenny B project, which is a store within a store. She's great. She's a wealth of knowledge. A huge boost to nailed it. We're so happy to have her. As we will find out, bees are our our food source. They um they link right up to it. So yeah, if they die, we die. It's very important what she does, and she does it. She does it with flair. Really. Being part of the community is to show the community what's in the community and all the talent that's here. Hello, my friends. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Joe with the Flow, where we went around town and really got real on the street this week. We talked to small businesses and what it's like to own a small business. So tune in next time. We might go see eSports. I don't know. We might even end up on the moon. So tune in next time. We'll see what happens. I gotta go talk to my friend Pennywise, but uh, I'll be with you later. It's been real. That's all we have for you this week, Wizards. Make sure to check out our weekly newsletter and podcasts. See you next week on BGTV. <laughs>